I have been riding two new motorcycles for about three years. The first one was N1S, which comes with the 2400 watt motor and could go as fast as 60 to 70 km per hour depending on your state of charge. About a year ago, I bought my second new, which is NGT, is equipped with a more powerful motor of 3500 watt. I also discovered that a lot of things in NGT are actually underpowered. In contrast to N1S, NGT are able to draw more power from two batteries simultaneously, which produces roughly about 90 amp. And when you multiply it with the running voltage of 60 volt, in total, you have about 5,400 watt to spare. This number could be translated to roughly seven horsepower, which is equivalent to 100 to 120 cc petrol engine two wheelers. With reasonable power, and there is a new movement in Thailand for small motorcycle touring. I had a few questions in mind. Is this mean new NGT can go beyond a city motorcycle? Given that the instant torque characteristic of the DC motor can new NGT go beyond the smooth and the flat road? Is NGT durable enough for a few hundred kilometers a day with hundreds of curves? going up and down the hill? Will there be other secret that could surprise me in the best or worst possible way? Basically, is, is new NGT good enough to inspire many others to take up a new journey to a more sustainable way of mobility, the way that wasn't chosen before? It didn't take much time for me to plan the trip, I remembered. It was just less than 24 hours before my trip began. The main preparation includes making a last minute visit to the service center in Bangkok to buy spare brake pads just in case. Unlike petrol engines or typical electric car, NGT energy is sourced from removable batteries which also get charged by normal power outlets commonly found in houses or hotels. After considering a few options, my choice is to transport with me the amount of energy that can give me 200 to 220 km per charge. This consists of three pairs of batteries. It takes about five hours to charge each battery in order to give you about 40 km, which is way slower than any EV cars. I also need to mention each battery weighs about 15 kilograms, and that means you have some constraint on how many of them that the motorcycle can efficiently transport and you can safely ride it on the road. To transport a payload of 60 kilograms consisting of batteries and chargers, I used the Coho XC Taylor from Burley. And with some modification, I managed to replace the original shock absorber screws with the Taylor couplers. A famous question is about the stability of riding with the Taylor attached on the back. I found distributing the weight between three wheels as equally as possible has made the riding super controllable. For the riding and charging plan, I divided the 400 km distance into two parts one in the morning and one in the evening, and I took a six hour break in between for resting and charging the batteries. To save energy consumption, after adding 100 kg to my normal payload, I decided to maintain the speed of 75 km per hour. Having the cruise control is really useful to achieve that and also give me some comfort. I reached the first hotel about noon. It has two stories. And I wasn't so lucky. All the room on the ground floors is fully occupied. And my room was almost on the end of the corridor on the first floor. For the charging system, I carried two original NGT chargers and two third-party chargers that come with my third-party batteries. Each charger could give maximum of output between 8 to 10 amp. I have four chargers to charge all four batteries at once, and this is very helpful. Although an original new charger can charge two batteries simultaneously, 
will slow down and become a center point of failure if a thing goes wrong. Also, each charger consumed about 600, 700 watt, which is equivalent to a microwave oven. And you never know the condition of the power outlet of the different places. Having separate chargers can avoid putting too much load for too long on the bad quality outlet and potentially reduce some risk of fire. So better carry more chargers if you can. I started off again around 6 p.m. The road condition for this part of the journey was the worst. There were a lot of potholes that aren't friendly to 12 inches wheel. The good thing about NGT is that blight LED headlight, which helps to avoid some of the obstacles and potholes, especially where the road surrounding was completely dark. I reached my second hotel around 11 p.m. It's a small family-run hotel and the owner whose bedroom is located near the reception area said he expected my motorcycle to wake him up. Only the next morning he was surprised that my motorcycle has no engine and it gave him a good non-interrupted sleep. In the following morning, I cannot perfectly explain my feeling of riding new NGT up and down the hills, going up and allowing the DC motor to outperform other petrol vehicles, not only easy but also very safe, giving that new only needs more space to maneuver. What keeps coming into my mind is to push new NGT more and more, and it never disappointed me. Going downhill wasn't as scary as I thought, although I was very careful to maintain safe speed, it's still worth noting that the regen braking system and the combined brakes gave me a lot of confidence. I'm not entirely sure if the light weight of the new also helps, perhaps there is less momentum to be handled. Despite achieving something significant like getting up on the top of the hill and making new friends who are interested in your story and your electric motorcycle, seeing the world broader and deeper. But what I found more meaningful is to go further into a path where currently fewer people is taking. The path that is calmer, cleaner and greener like Pu Hinrongka National Park. And I want to end this video with the experience that both I and the players had with this highly capable electric vehicle from new. The experience that teaches me perhaps the best time of this trip is when we become intimate with the nature. Not by being fast or loud, but rather by slowly blending into the surroundings and being as silent as possible. Goodbye and thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a like or comment for what I can improve or any inspiration for my next trip.